so what do we got going on today? Um, well, we have at least the start of something big. Um, as you know, when I got this RV, I'd mentioned lots of projects, several things I was going to do to make this my home, uh, to make it more functional. Uh, and I've been showing you throughout the process, little by little, how we make some changes. And uh, the next thing on my list is the same thing I did to Yoda. Uh, once again, I'm going to re be removing the entire four-person dinette. And... Um, this is going to take a little bit to get through, so I'm going to wait till I get everything all completed before uploading this video that you're watching right now. So you get to watch the whole thing from start to finish in this one video, even though it's going to take a couple weeks to get the entire process all completed. But first, you know how much I love my toys and gadgets. I currently do not have a Bluetooth speaker. My last one finally crapped out after five years, so um, I got a new speaker. Somebody had one of these on their inner tube the last time I was floating. This is the... Cove Commuter portable Bluetooth speaker. Apparently has eight hours of music on one charge, which is pretty ridiculous, but nice packaging in here. It is Bluetooth up to 30 feet. It is water resistant, apparently not waterproof. Neither was my last one though, but uh, water resistant and ooh, look at that. That's pretty sleek actually. It's got a little built-in subwoofer on the, the bottom or side. I guess you just, I guess you play it like like that is how it, it sits on, on the table like that. But yeah, it's got a, a, a rotary analog volume dial up here, digital display for skipping. You can use it as a smartphone speaker too and just pause your music. It's really small. It's about the size of a, of a Coke can. In fact, it'll probably fit into a cup holder. So, okay. It's Bluetooth and NFC. Comes with a charging cord and 3.5 millimeter audio jacks for those of you like me that still use the iPod that has these connections so you don't have to use Bluetooth if you don't want to. It's got a mode button up here for uh, bass or normal or they call it indoor or outdoor. So maybe bass for inside and the subwoofer will work and if you just want volume outside you can turn that off and it'll just uh, go as loud as you want I guess. It is much smaller than Bluetooth speakers I have had in the past but much more or portable also so that is a good thing. I'm sure it came with a little bit of battery life but it probably says in the directions that we're supposed to fully charge this. I'm gonna go get my iPod right now and uh, fire this guy up. Okay, let's see if we can get some power. Is there any battery life in it? Oh. It's doing something. The uh, digital dis display came to, came to life on there. You can uh, swipe it to skip songs and oh yeah it wants to find something. Here I'll give you something to find. Okay, I uh, connected it to the commuter with my iPhone here, iPod. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of video tests on this because you guys know how it works. No matter what it sounds like here, you're still watching this YouTube video on your cell phone or on your laptop with crummy speakers or whatever, so that audio is not going to come through. All I can really do is compare it to what I've heard on other speakers of this size. And I will say it looks like it has feet on the bottom where the subwoofer is, so you, you could set it down and play it and maybe it'll come out, but it, it is designed with the, the feet on the long side, so it's designed to sit like that and maybe have a wall or something on the other side of the subwoofer to kind of bounce that, that base back a little bit, possibly. How about some ACDC? So I've got volume turned all the way up on this. I'm gonna use the dial up here to turn it up once the bass starts in this song. All right, here we go. That is... Wow, that is a that is a lot of music there. I am definitely going to stick this inside and we're going to listen to this in there. If you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, I'll put a link in the video description, but you can go to that link, that Cove Audio link, and use code NOMADIC and you can get 65% off your purchase of one of these, which is a really good deal. I will put that link in the video description below. You can check out if you like. But my favorite thing about it is the portability, the, the smallness of it, the fact that it fits in a cup holder and can go anywhere with me, and eight hours is a lot of time for music. So go turn on some tunes and start this other project. Put it into perspective as we stand back again this is kind of to make the living space more functional for me but also make it so that I don't have to have the slides out. Now when this slide is in and my two dual recliners are in there is a walkway comes to right there there so there, there's still a walkway but not much. I'm trying to think how much I really use this dinette. I do not eat my meals at this dinette. I eat my meals with my plate in my lap right there 
and watch TV on my 55 inch screen TV here. Uh, I don't work here because this is incredibly uncomfortable. I've been sitting there with my laptop on my lap. I do not use this space at all. Why do I have a four person dinette in this RV? I don't need it. So picture this, if you will, everything comes out. The seats, the cushions, the back, the entire table, this whole section comes out, opens up completely, and then we're gonna add a six drawer system right underneath the TV that only comes out 16 inches from the wall and gives me all of this back open for floor space and for square feet inside the RV. I'll go ahead and flash something on your screen right now. The one I'm looking at, at the one I already purchased at Walmart. It's uh, gonna be there in about a week to pick up well, and assemble. Yeah, but that's okay. And so tonight I am going to start the demolition of uh, the dinette, just like I did in Yoda. And I already checked underneath these two drawers. They are full pass through. There's no obstructions and the vinyl flooring continues on underneath because it was done before this was put in. So um, as far as I can tell, this is just something that's got to get done. And I know people might say, you know, Eric, Eric, that's a scary thing. How, how can you consider doing something like that? You got to make it yours. You just have to. Uh, this is a complete waste of space. And usually it's only here to hide the fact that there's things in the RV underneath that are being hidden, like water heaters, water tanks. This one doesn't have anything. Now, those are long storage bays there that go all the way back. But again, why does it have to come out so far? That six drawer system that goes against the wall is gonna be really good. And when we get done, I'll show you how I modify it a little bit to make it roadworthy so that the drawers don't come out on me while I'm driving. But first step, tear it up. <laughs> get a load of it, because this is the last time you're gonna see it like this. All right, so about a, about a half hour later here, uh, I'm just being really careful with the first one to find out how it's put together and where all the important screws are at and everything. Uh, Jax is uh, checking my work here, making sure I did okay. As you can see, I have removed uh, one of the uh, bench seats here. And uh, it came out pretty easy. Like I said, the floor is in pretty good condition. There are going to be noticeable holes if you get up close, and I may fill these up later. There's about eight total screws in the floor and there's I counted six in the wall over here but a lot of this will actually be covered by the the new dresser cabinet that'll go in there so I'll uh, keep plugging away here remove the table and then I'll start working on the last bench area here how's my progress Jax you have any complaints about the service and quality pretty good good deal man thanks look at that cutie patootie he's like dad Everything is disappearing. What's going on here, man? Don't worry, man. Well, I know your seat's kind of blocked right now. It's transition phase. Um, I did have to crank the AC up a little bit more. Pushed her down to 65 degrees in here. It's not that cold, but I set the thermostat to 65. Because uh, still breaking a little sweat here. But I got everything picked up. Uh, they got a dumpster here on site, so I'm uh, donating. <laughs> pieces of Miranda and you know like I say from a distance you're not gonna see all the little holes when I took the two seat belt bolts out yeah one there one there okay uh, something needs to get done about that because when the new dresser entertainment system is up against the wall it's only gonna be out 16 inches it's only gonna cover this hole this one will be exposed but that's where I'm gonna place my shoes in the halfway point of that brick right there that's how far it'll stick out, right there. And if I step back again, look how open it is. You know, when the slide is in the end position, I have a magic walkway here. Just opens up the whole room, you know, and I like it. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> I've been hard at it this morning already, making some coffee and finishing up this little project for the day, at least um, as much as I wanted to do. So I did remove the last uh, piece of the dinette there. And uh, you know what? I'm actually really happy with how the space is looking right now. To put it into perspective, the purpose of the four-person dinette that was right here, all of the contents that were stored and used that I needed for life are right there in that tiny little corner. That's what's left 
of that enormous, ridiculous dinette that took up this entire space right here. And uh, of course, those things will go into one of the six drawers that'll be down here underneath the TV here later, soon, at the end of this video. Hopefully, if all things go well. Another look here of the progress and where we stand with everything. <laughs> Just uh, really opened up this space, right? Definitely. But as it turns out, I've got a new project this morning with some new packages and we are gonna dive right into another project while I pause and wait to finish this. Just as exciting as this, actually, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am adding satellite TV to Miranda. I have had satellite TV before. It's been nearly four years. I enjoyed it while it was there. I didn't think it worked out as well as I'd hoped, but um, there's been some big changes. And stick around at the end of the video because I'm going to help you decide whether it's right or wrong for you and why there's so many different ways. Uh, but I want to get into this installation before it gets too hot up on the roof. It really, really gets hot up there with the white rubber. So what I'm doing is uh, I went with Dish. And I went with Dish because Dish Outdoors has now really listened to the RV community much more than their competitors. And they now have a pay-as-you-go, no credit needed, Month to month, you can even change the packages that you get. So, and they have a new, newer uh, satellite dish here. Uh, this is a, there's a satellite in here that's automatic. It's called the uh, Playmaker. Uh, I went with the Tailgater last time. I've got my Wally. It's a receiver, and it'll do. It'll be in uh, a DVR when I get done with it. And um, I got a, a roof mount kit through WineGuard because I'm going to permanently mount it to the roof. Because as we know, there are lots of ways to RV. There are a lot of different RV combinations. That's why you can choose whatever lifestyle fits you. Same thing goes for satellite TV or whatever TV you choose. Um, as you can see here out in the field, satellite dish there, satellite, satellite. There's a, a lot of satellite dishes around here. That's because uh, you do need the, the southern sky to make it work. And uh, most of the people here at this park have their satellite dish like I just got out on a tripod like this with extension cords. And then some of them either lock it, these ones aren't, but sometimes they bring them inside. And you know, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing because there's a lot of different ways to do it. But, but me personally, uh, <laughs> I, I have cut a lot of the work out of life and I just wanna simplify it. That's why I'm going to permanently mount it to the roof up here. But please do stick around because I may change your mind if you were not a believer before. And uh, I'll just do this in the order that uh, is natural. Um, I do have some self-leveling seal in here. At the end, I am going to use Gorilla Glue and screws to mount this. There's the uh, kit in case you're looking for it. And uh, what I'm going to do is first, I'll take the metal feet out of here. I'll attach them to my satellite dish here. And then we'll go up to the roof, I'll Gorilla Glue it, screw it, and then I'll detach it because I want to make sure these get in the right spot up on the roof. I do want to show some of the uh, roof mounting kit hardware here because not a lot of people go this option, but it comes with the metal feet, which um, you can see right there how the dish goes, goes into it, right? And then that keeps the dish up off the roof so that air and water can go underneath. And you don't have to seal around, you know, like the entire surface of this. It, it raises it up with these feet. Now, in the directions here are some more important stuff about your signal obstruction chart. Okay, so it's saying that for 18 inches, 18.8 .8 inches away, you have to have nothing eight inches higher than that. So when you're thinking air conditioner shrouds or boosters or anything else on the RV that might be higher, there's your guide. Uh, if you're 40 inches away, it can be no bigger than 15 inches off the ground, okay? So take that into consideration. Again, the reasoning for just kind of positioning the feet on here now is so that I can screw them in to the right spot on the roof, and then I will properly secure them to the actual satellite dish. And the, the screws that come with it, they already have some kind of blue Loctite on them, so when they're, you know, screwed into here like this, they're, they're not going to come out. So I'll make a couple trips up to the roof with this and all the supplies and everything, and we'll have a little chat up there. Uh, keeping with our rule of spacing, you know, how far it has to be away from obstructions, Really, it's just the two air conditioners. Um, I utilize the very center space for the booster right there. So really, to get clear of the air conditioners, neither back corner will work back there. But up front, I have chosen to permanently mount my satellite dish 
in front of my bat wing antenna. And no, I don't want to remove the bat wing antenna. I don't want to get rid of it because I still enjoy having the ability to have free over the air stations. Then again, uh, more on those options and reasons at the end of the video. But the bat wing antenna completely folds down flat within two inches of the roof. And I'm going to utilize this front corner space right there with one again once this antenna is down uh, there will be no obstructions just the solar panel that comes up about three inches this batwing antenna falls down right here so get my glue screw everything up uh, get my self-leveling lap sealant and I will install it right there and show you what it looks like in a minute okay so I'm done enough right now. I still have some cleanup to do, but it's done enough so that we can go downstairs because I really want to watch TV. I'll show you where we're at right now. We are secured and self-leveling lap sealant around everything. It'll actually flatten a little more and look a little better. Coax going underneath. I still have to cut these zip tie ends going back in under the fridge vent. I have already resealed up the screws down there. And what I'll probably do tonight after it gets dark and cooled down is I'll come up here and use the rest of that lap sealant check all the other seams, clean up everything, bring all the tools down. It's really, really hot up on the roof and I wanna watch some TV, so let's go downstairs first. All right, so inside here, this is the uh, Wally mobile receiver. You know, if I hold it in my hand, you can see how much smaller it really is than the ones that are in the homes. And it's built a little differently, and you know, it's supposed to withstand temperature changes and vibrations of the RV life, so yeah, there's that. There's the RF remote that it comes with, and RF is cool because that means it does not need to be pointed at the DVR all the time. Uh, you can point it this way or be over there, you know, so it's uh, it's not, doesn't have to have line of sight to the DVR. It says to do it in the right order, so we will do coax first into the receiver, followed by HDMI, and we'll give it some power, turn on the TV, and set it up. So every time you get parked and turn this guy on, it's going to search for the satellites automatically. Uh, the satellite dish on the roof is powered through the coax to automatically search for all the satellites it needs to give you TV. It may take up to five minutes each day to get this started once you've parked for the day. And so, I'm, and again, I got to call them with my activation code and get set up. I'll let you know when we get up and running here. So it wants you to select your state. We are in California, uh, Southern California right there. Say yes, saving, and then scan. And uh, it's going to check the installation. Okay, I checked my installation, and now we are acquiring the signal. While it was checking my installation, you could definitely hear it up top making some noise in this corner. Even with the air conditioner on, you can hear it turning and, and locating all of the, the three satellites that it needs for this. So it does say it, it should take no more than five minutes, so we'll see. And just like that, we are watching satellite TV. My boys, the Impractical Jokers. Oh, yeah. There's the uh, menu like that. Uh, all my channels. So as long as we stay parked right here, we don't have to reset it. The satellite will stay locked into everything on here. So I kind of hinted at the fact that this video may actually follow me for an entire week here with the other projects. So at least I'll be kind of updating you throughout this process of everything. I will point out two things that I already learned. Syncing the, the uh, Wally remote with the TV is super easy these days. I remember having to enter codes and do searches. Now you just enter LG and then press go and somehow it magically gets the volume and mute and everything for the TV. So that was super easy. But one thing that's strange and I found this out by Googling is that the default setting for the Wally is set to output the picture in 480p, which is like cell phone quality. You need to change that to 1080p to get the clear, crisp picture. So we didn't even see 1080p the first time I showed it, but it's all fixed now and it's saved. Uh, good to go. One other thing I want to talk about is the difference between mounting it on the roof as opposed to having it on the ground and why I chose that. So again, I chose to do the permanent roof mount and not do this stuff. I would say it's pretty much half and half when you see full-time RVers or even weekend warrior RVers. You're either going to have something like this uh, traditional looking satellite or that white one back there, little, little dome satellite. You got three of them right here that are all uh, putting them outside. And then down here behind me, you've got me and four others that actually have them mounted to our roof permanently. Now, what I want to point out to y'all is I've been doing this nine years on the road, uh, six years on YouTube. I am all about making it as easy as possible day to day. I move often, nearly every single day sometimes. So bringing something out like this and setting it up every single day and then putting it all away and position it is not what I want to do. I want to just go inside, push a button. 
and it'd be automatic. I don't have to mess with it. I don't have to do anything. Is it going to work all the time? Probably not. It's okay though. I have other ways to entertain myself, you know? So for me, it's a set it and forget it type of thing. For you, it might be totally different. You may want to park in the shade all the time and put that out every single day far enough away in the sun where it gets the signal. I think you just need to evaluate and find out what's most important to you because it's not going to work for every single person. Uh, me doing this for a long time, I know simplicity is the best way to go. Set it and forget it once. I don't want to climb up and down that roof. I'm getting older myself. I just, I don't want to do it. I don't have to do it. One last thing, let's go inside with the AC. Now Dish Network is not the only activity I have in the RV. I've talked about my PS4 and my Netflix and Amazon Prime and over the air TV. This is the same thing with heat. I have a bunch of redundancies in case my propane goes out while I still have a catalytic heater or I still have a ceramic heater that I can plug in and use uh, plugged in. My life in this RV is not just business. It's, it's half pleasure, it's half business, but it's also just life for me. And I wanna be happy and I wanna have options. Uh, this may not be important for every single person watching this video, but for me, when it comes to entertainment, having live TV through, through Dish outdoors is, is uh, it's really fun. It's really exciting to me and it really works. And uh, so yeah. Hang tight, stay tuned, because I may have a, a promo code if you want to get a good deal on the Dish Outdoor Playmaker combo that I got. But for right now, I need to clean up a little more of this other project going on. So another update here today. Just got this bad boy in the mail. This tiny little USB looking device right here with the uh, Dish logo on the end. You can't see it. Uh, anyway, this is the Bluetooth adapter that plugs into one of the two available USB ports on the receiver and then allows me to use a Bluetooth device to listen to the audio, which is great for my headphones or I can use my new speaker and have that behind me. But mostly what I think it's gonna work best for is the uh, headphones. So let me let me try this out. Yeah, it's, it's working. It's not working outside. So it's not working here, it's working here. Woohoo, that's kind of cool. Now I can uh, walk to the bathroom and uh, not miss anything or walk outside or turn my back and do dishes and still hear what's going on the TV. So, so yeah, cool. I'll tell you guys, um, it is weird filming this video for the last week, but like only in little pieces while life goes on. Like to put this into perspective, I just got my DVR expansion pack for, for the Wally, -E, and this is, uh, I just did day one at Disneyland. So. I still have to edit all the Disney stuff and add this clip in and then wait three more days until I get the uh, dresser system uh, picking up at, at Walmart site to store. But anyway, yeah, so I got the uh, expansion pack, DVR. It's the DVR upgrade through Dish Outdoors and for your Wally, -E, and you plug it into one of the other, the last remaining USB port on the back and then it's a DVR. I can record my shows, watch them on a delay, watch them later, and uh, so yeah. All right, so I got the uh, DVR function all figured out, uh, and I'm going I'm to test it out because I, I recorded something last night. There is a DVR button on my remote, so if I hit that, there should be one thing. It's right there, Dish CSI Miami. Hit play. Say yes. Watch. And like magic. There we go. From this screen, I can also just delete that recording from the DVR as well. And when I'm going through the menu system, I can select a future show, like Friends, and there's my option, record this. Yes, I would like to record this. And there's the uh, red icon there telling me that it's going to be recorded. Yeah, okay, this was weird. Definitely worth sharing. Uh, I was waiting for the uh, dresser to go in, right? It's an online order that's still due in two days here in Anaheim. I, <laughs> you could not script this. I pulled into the first Walmart after I left the resort, after checking out, got a text message on my phone when I parked saying order ready for pickup. And I went, oh geez, well, let's go to this Walmart instead. Might as well do my shopping there. I parked at the Walmart that was delivering the dresser package, <laughs> like randomly, the second I parked, two days early. Because I was going over to a subscriber's house for a couple days here in Anaheim to kind of regroup, edit some video and, and wait for this. And here it is. So, so, so there it is, that monstrosity right there. There is some uh, assembly required though. So, uh, now I'll go do shopping. There's a pet code across the street. Go get Jax's food. 
and uh, we'll start putting this together. Yeah, so there it is all beautiful and, com and complete there. <laughs> I got this sucker for 79 bucks site to store at Walmart, so I can't complain, but it is literally in pieces. Look at all that. All the drawer hardware and everything. Got fours, ones, there's a two, three, marked five. There's two sevens. There's the big number nine right here. Some tens and some twelves. I'm gonna magically cut back when this turns into a drawer. <laughs> I right, just watching some impractical jokers as I work here. And I got the base done, all put together. All that's left now is to uh, put the drawers together and uh, pop them in. And then we'll uh, slide this bad boy under underneath the TV. Dun, 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 dun. Better than I could have expected, even though I planned this out to the T. Yeah, I know this video is long and it took 10 days to get all this crazy stuff going on in Miranda, but man, we're getting close to this being the perfect RV. Look how awesome that looks with those drawers instead of that big waste of space dinette out here. Gotta make it yours, man. I love it. I still got a few more things I want to do tomorrow, I'm, but I want to close this video out before I finish every little detail. I want to get some L brackets and bolt it to the floor. And because this dresser was not meant for the RV life, when you turn a corner, they will just come out on you, right? So what I'm gonna do is right here and here, I'm going to mount, well, we'll go into the bathroom to show you this, but whatever you call these things that I said that I couldn't find that one time, it's got the male in there, the female in there, so that when you close it, it latches. I'm gonna put two of those in each drawer of the dresser. And then my system will be complete here. I have really been enjoying Dish Network here for the last 10 days. I don't know how I survived without it, really. I mean, I'm watching NASCAR and, and baseball playoffs and football and, you know, it's, it's a little tricky having TV on the road if you don't have something set up, but, but like I said, Dish Outdoors is catering to the RV community so much more. And now, with the My Dish app on your phone, as you go from place to place, you can change your zip code on the app right here and get the local channels no matter where you're at in the country. Instantly, well not instantly, within about five minutes of updating it, the uh, zip code, you get every city's local channels included with Dish through satellite, not over the air. So, and it's super easy with, with the app here. And if you're interested in adding Dish Outdoors to your mobile life on the road, I'll put some links in the video description below, but you can check out dishformyrv.com. And I got some good news. If you use promo code NOMADIC on that link below, you can save $50 on your bundle. I'm really going to be enjoying this system on the road, but <laughs> this video has to close because it's been going on and on and on. Mission accomplished. I'm happy. Have a good day. Jackson, I'll see you on the road. Bye-bye.